one of us heard in a New York City taxi cab, which now has ubiquitous screen presence. There's a television in the back of each of them, which horrified some of us when that uh, uh, began. But one of us heard a quotation from Lady Gaga in an interview today that went something like this, I don't want my fans to worship me. I want them to worship themselves. Um, so as our expert on Lady Gaga, if you could unpack that quote a little bit and then say a thing, a, a word or two um, more about what you were touching on in your remarks about the difference between creativity and the way historically we've understood creativity and provocation, and then where in that um, uh, dichotomy does talent really lie? Okay. Um, so to the first question first about you know, Lady Gaga wanting her fans to really worship themselves. There's, there, she, she had another quote um, not too long ago where she said, you know, I really want my fans, who she calls her little monsters, um, to get in touch with a deeper, darker, more psychotic part of themselves. And I think both of those quotes are indicative of something kind of disturbing, which is that, you know, Lady Gaga and maybe you know, certain elements of pop culture at large, they don't want the people to whom they are, you know, their audience to become better than what they are. They just want them, what you are is good enough as it is, whether, you know, if, if that's you being the most psychotic you that you can be, then, you know, that's, that, that's great. And, and, it, and it kind of, it, where, you know, there's no room for kind of civilization in that sense, because what is being psychotic? It's, you know, it's being violent, and it's being a sociopath, and kind of being antisocial in a lot of different ways. And these are all elements that you see in Lady Gaga's performances, and in her music videos, and in her lyrics. They're all, they're all um, you know, laced with violence, and, you know, violent sexuality. And, you know, so, you know in, in the civilized world, sex is supposed to be about love. In Lady Gaga's world, it's about pain. Um, and a lot of people have compared her to, you know, Madonna, you know, because she's very, you know, she markets herself as a sexual object. Well, there was an interesting point made in, in one of the articles that I, that I read about um, Lady Gaga that said, well, Madonna, at least, when she was being sexual, it, it was sexy. When Lady Gaga is being sexual, it just looks like it hurts, you know? and. And so I think, you know, I think that just goes, you know, so when she says things like, you know, the taxi cab quote, or I want my audience to get in touch with the, mo the most psychotic part of themselves, I think that's really worrying because it, it doesn't drive people to be the higher person that they, they should be. Um, and, that, and that also goes, speaks to your question about, okay, what's the difference between actual, actually being creative and then just merely provoking um, you know, your, your audience. And if you look at the people who came, the, the popular stars that came directly before Lady Gaga, um, you know, like Britney Spears or Beyonce, um, they, you know, they were provocative in that they were kind of being maybe overly, overly sexual. Um, but they were women who marketed themselves as kind of sexy women and, you know, who didn't wear as, as much clothes as they should have perhaps. Um, but Lady Gaga is completely different. She doesn't look like a woman. She looks like a transvestite. And um, she, she's like, she, she, when you see her perform, like the motorcycle image, she's kind of a, a half machine. Um, and I think that you know, part of the reason that she's done that is because she knows that being Britney Spears and being sexy and whatever is not going to set her apart anymore. If she wants to, to, to be set apart, she has to really be provocative and, you know, in an age of, for women especially, where women are trying to, you know, figure out what their role is in society, where they're kind of assuming many masculine qualities. Um, to her, that meant being, you know, this kind of androgynous, asexual um, object that, you know, while being asexual is still very um, defined in terms of sex. Um, and so, and so that's, and that's not creative because that's, that's just being reactionary. She's not actually kind of, you know, putting together something that's, you know, beautiful and um, enlightening. And, and, that's, and I think that's what talent would be. You know, when you look at somebody who's a good dancer or when you listen to something that, to a song that really moves you, it's, it's because it has some kind of virtue about it, whether it's, you know, um, being creative or being beautiful or, you know, et cetera. That actually prompts a follow-up question, which mm -hmm. there seems to be 
an unusual contradiction here because the fan base that Lady Gaga taps into is exactly the same generation that we've also heard called the organization kids, mm -hmm. the do-gooder millennials, you know, the mm -hmm. ones who are very tech savvy, as Mark has written about. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, we have another essay in the book, the one that Caitlin Flanagan wrote, which talks a little bit about the, the popularity of novels like the Hunger Games um, series. So it seems to me you have these kids who, many of whom are being, you know, pushed very hard throughout their childhood to achieve, achieve, achieve. Do you think that perhaps one of the reasons Lady Gaga is so appealing to this generation is that maybe they do need to tap into, maybe there's something wrong with a culture of extreme achievement that she is an alternative to, perhaps? Mm -hmm. what, what are your thoughts about that? No, I think that I think there's definitely something to that. And the, the person who would, would have been kind of the achiever in high school and you know goes on to great success, probably would have been a little bit of an outcast in high school too, you know, not, you know, going to all the parties and things like that. And Lady Gaga, she knows how to reach those people. She, cause she herself was an outcast in high school and she's an outcast um, on the musical scene right now. You still have like Rihanna and all the actual, the, the pretty girls. And then you have Lady Gaga who is like, who, um, you know, she reaches out to the loners and to her, her gay constituents who, you know, who are also outcasts in high school. Um, and so, you know, and so maybe, maybe there's some of that there, and maybe also there's just some of the, you know, to, to these high achievers, this is an escape from, from that world, and um, maybe we need more moderation in both, you know, both the, the popular culture and our achievement culture to avoid such extremes. This is great. You've just perfectly tied into Dan's early <laughs> remarks and given us a wonderful opening for Mark, because the question I have for him is,